Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. The pleasure is mine, actually, and I'm re really honored to, to, to meet you. I mean, to join you. Your Excellency, Mayor Mohammed Bodra, Your Excellency, Mayor Virginia Raji, uh, Executive Director Maimuna Sharif, Under Secretary General Fabrizio Drummond, Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends. COVID-19 is the greatest global shock in decades, causing major disruptions to our health systems, economy, and society. More than five and a half million cases of COVID-19 have been reported to WHO, and more than 350,000 deaths. Lives and livelihoods have been appended. The COVID-19 pandemic highlights the crucial role of mayors and local authorities as guardians and promoters of good health and well-being. You are on the front lines. I take this opportunity to acknowledge your crucial role and thank you for your leadership in the face of this global crisis. WHO stands with you. In close collaboration with our member states, WHO has produced evidence-based guidance for strengthening preparedness for COVID-19 in cities and urban settings. You can also access dozens of pieces of technical guidance and other WHO resources for local authorities under the EPWIN platform on our website. Of course, as urban leaders, you're looking beyond the immediate response and already planning for the recovery. We cannot go back to the way we did things before, as His Excellency Mayor Bodra said. This pandemic has magnified our existing inequalities and thrived in the gaps in our health systems. Deaths and loss of livelihoods have been strongly driven by socioeconomic status. Lack of universal health coverage has left billions of people without reliable and affordable access to medical treatment. We have seen how even health systems in wealthy countries have been overcome by COVID-19. It's an old public health dictum that the most expensive thing of all is to do nothing. Unfortunately, we're still learning this lesson, attempting to save money by neglecting environmental protection, emergency preparedness, health systems, and social safety nets has proven to be a false economy. The bill is now being paid many times over. Cities cannot afford repeated disasters on the scales of COVID-19, whether they are triggered by the next pandemic or from mounting environmental damage and climate change. Business as usual is not good enough. The allocation of investments and the policy decisions that will guide both short and long-term recovery will shape the way we live in cities for years to come. Nowhere is this more important than in the area of environmental degradation and pollution, and particularly on the greenhouse gas emissions that are driving global warming and the climate crisis. We have a choice. Decisions made in the coming months and implemented in our cities can look, can lock in economic development patterns that will do permanent and escalating damage. Or if we wisely taken, can promote a healthier, fairer and greener world. Mayors and local authorities are uniquely positioned to lead the urban transformation and to deliver health and well-being. Integrating health and well-being into urban planning 
is a fundamental step in that direction, including on decisions on water and sanitation, transport, housing, land use, energy, and waste management. To support the strategic integration of actions through urban planning, WHO and UN Habitat launched last week a new report called Integrating Health in Urban and Territorial Planning. This is a source book to assist national governments, local authorities, and planning professionals on how to incorporate health considerations into planning. I'm sure you will be hearing more about these issues from my, from my sister, Maimuna Sharif, Executive Director of UN Habitat. We have to combat climate change and environmental destruction with the same seriousness with which we are now fighting COVID-19. Let's heed the lessons of preparedness and early action that we have learned during this crisis. As I like to say, let's fix the roof before the rain comes. Actions do have consequences. And as COVID-19 has taught us, the timely, comprehensive approach make a real difference and save lives and livelihoods. As mayors and local authorities, you are the champions for the green, healthy, and prosperous urban societies of the future. We look forward to working with you. I thank you. Merci beaucoup. Shukran jazilan, Akhil Aziz. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Directeur. Euh, ces paroles qui nous re, euh, réchauffent le cœur. Merci beaucoup. Et comme je vous ai dit, nous sommes à votre disposition. Les villes et les gouvernements locaux et régionaux à travailler ensemble avec l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Maintenant, j'ai le grand plaisir et l'honneur d'inviter Madame Maimouna Hadjarif, secrétaire générale adjointe de l'ONU et directrice exécutive d'ONU Habitat. Il nous, il nous a toujours accompagnés et nous la remercions. La parole est à vous, Madame Maimouna. Euh, 